Ethiopia, an ancient word. It comes from Greek and means with a sunburned face. Always a sun-scorched land, it still shows traces of man's past history in all its complexity and nobility. Evidence of this can be found in the country's most sacred festivity, Timket, the Ethiopian epiphany. We are flying over the eastern Ethiopian plateau, heading towards the place where Timket, this yearly religious event of the Coptic Church, is celebrated in a particularly grandiose way. We will witness a Christian festivity in which can be discerned the mysterious roots of this archaic land, stratified in centuries of different civilizations. The most splendid and mysterious of the Ethiopian cultures flourished in Axum, our destination. Thousands of years ago, Negus Negast, the King of Kings, established here the capital of his empire. Originally founded, it is said, by the legendary Queen of Sheba, an empire which stretched from eastern Africa as far as Yemen. A vast area that saw the birth, almost 3,000 years ago, of what archaeologists call the South Arabian civilization. History and myth mingle in the memories evoked by the stones of this place, but also by living events such as this joyful collective festivity of the Epiphany, when an astonishing feeling of communion makes man feel closer to his God, but also closer to the surrounding nature. After landing in a small plane, we'll continue our trip with the help of a mule train. The difference between new and old is a difficult distinction to make here, since past and present are so fused together. The present that we are living in could easily be a day of the fourth century when Christianity arrived in Ethiopia. The new faith immediately became popular, but it remained cut off from the rest of the Christian world. And this isolation helped to emphasize the special characteristics of the church which called itself Coptic. Climbing up the plateau of Axum, we pass villages perched amid the mountains, places where the only source of energy is still physical force. Memories of raids and violence are still vivid in the minds of these isolated people as deep-rooted as their attachment to the symbols of their ancient faith. Hence, the rifle to defend themselves against aggression and the cross to represent heaven are not mere symbols, but rather reference points of security in daily existence. <laughs> Their standard of living is among the poorest in the already poor social scenario of black Africa. But their way of life is nevertheless serene, especially when compared with the chaos of big cities. One such place in Ethiopia is Addis Ababa, an ambitious capital which, despite its giant glass and concrete blocks, cannot hide its contradictions. A weird combination of urban people, 
trying not to forget their rural origins, and yet unable to totally accept the dogmas and ideologies they have imported. Sharp contradictions underlying the fact that in Ethiopia, more than anywhere else, the cultural roots remain alive mainly in the villages. Living in the city, often not by choice, creates confusion and humiliation in those hoping to escape the growing poverty problem of rural existence. This country, whose history is a sad inlay of colonial domination and feudal government, continues to struggle in difficult economic conditions, rendered even more dramatic today by a tyrannical regime. From the oldest colonial period, that of the Portuguese, traces have remained only in the eastern plateau, where we are heading to meet the people who will be celebrating Timcat. Yatsu Castle is a reminder of that Portuguese invasion back in the 16th century. And it was in that same castle in 1635 that the Emperor Facilides set up his capital in defiance of sacred axle. Majestically impressive memories of ancient Aksum are carved in these monoliths. They date back to the glorious period when Aksum was the jewel in the crown of an empire extending from this region to distant Yemen. Of the over 100 surviving obelisks, which all had either a celebratory or a funerary function, this one is the biggest. In fact, it's the biggest in the world. We see it still standing. It's 33 meters high, amongst others which are broken and some which were never erected. Other unusual objects are these stone blocks, so-called thrones of kings, used by the South Arabian rulers to receive their subjects in these surrounding woods.
simplicity and grandeur of past splendor, to which the squalid poverty of the present makes a desolate counterpoint. But today, this desolation will have its moment of redemption, and the humble sound of little bells is announcing it on the occasion of the Feast of Epiphany. Timket is an eagerly awaited and very popular festivity because it is a moment of hope. Timket, when, as in a dream, the Ethiopia of gold and splendor and glory will live again for everybody. Timket, Epiphany. This Coptic ritual is different from its equivalent in Western Christianity, also known as Twelfth Night, not only because it falls on a different date, the 27th of January instead of the 6th, but for its surprising, deeply intimate relationship with nature. This is important in a time of terrible famines such as today, which seem to belie that sacred harmony between man and nature, the unity that has always been celebrated in Timket. They thank God for his gift of this balance, which needs to be restored here more than anywhere else. The characteristics fusing history and myth, reality and fantasy that are typical of the Ethiopian culture of Aksum are all present in this epiphany ritual. Taking part, together with the priests and the monks, here called the Abuna, or Our Fathers, are hundreds of pilgrims and mixed amongst them the lepers and the sick, all hoping for a miraculous cure. The Abunas do not preach much in their ceremonies, but make up for this with very colorful liturgical rites. Timket gives them the year's best opportunity for a spectacular display of ritualistic splendor. Timket actually means baptism. Baptism in the river, commemorating Christ's baptism in the Jordan. And that's why the ceremony takes place in a setting with freshwater springs. As we make for this sacred place, we are able to mingle with the crowd, the first foreign witnesses to get close to and film objects about which the Abunas are very secretive.
wrapped in embroidered material, these objects are carried on their heads. They are the tabots, which means the Ark of the Covenant. Their presence renders every action and every place sacred. Without the tabot, a Coptic church would be nothing but a simple home, a simple hut. Once in the area of the sacred spring where the Timket ceremonial is to begin, the tabots, or tablets, are protected in tents, where prayers are chanted throughout the night. secret event takes place which for the first time ever foreigners are allowed to observe. The pilgrims bathe in a communal ceremony. This practice did not conform to the rigid moralistic ethics of the first European missionaries to arrive here with the Portuguese. They couldn't imagine how in the Christian liturgy of the Coptic Church, they could survive the ritual of a previous pagan cult. Clearly evident in this veneration of water, seen as a miraculous element, a sacred element of nature, together with fire. Water and fire are in fact deemed to be the elements of purification of sins. And in the days of Timcat, purity is an absolute value. Only those who have not had sexual intercourse or eaten meat for two days can participate in the ceremony. resumes its way, coming down towards Axum, the tabots are covered again to protect them from profane eyes. The open umbrellas are not only to protect from the sun, but above all to symbolize the vault of heaven.
signs, habits, and rituals that today, on the threshold of the third millennium, allow us to relive moments that belong to the first millennium in a sort of time warp and enable us to understand how sensing the divine and the mystical participation in the glory of nature are an integral part of the Ethiopian's life. Even today, in these years of misery and violence, thus pain seems forgotten, at least during the long hours of this out-of-time procession. Axum, in the area of the obelisks, the ritual will be complete when the cross, Christian symbol, is sanctified with the dominant element of pagan spirituality, water. With the large gilded cross of the Abuna of the Abunas, the high priest, the sign of the cross is traced over the surface of the water contained in this tank amongst whose stones gushes water from Axum's richest spring. The ceremony of Timket is now over. The baptism of the spirit. The water is now sacred. The crowd is unable to contain itself eager to collect some water now it has been blessed, as if one single drop had the magic power to relieve the suffering of a whole year. At Timket, the custom is for everyone to be sprinkled with the holy water. In this action, the pagan origin of the entire ritual is particularly evident. For all the primitive archaic cultures, the jet of water is a fertility symbol, evoking the sexual act, a presage of fertility, of wealth, of prosperity. A short but intense surge of joy. In the dark days of Ethiopia, Timket is a moment of renewal and redemption, of vitality. Water and fire. Potent memories of past greatness and good luck symbols for a better future. <laughs> 